Alright, this is just a quick video on how I make uh, temperature controllers. I've made a few of them um, and I just want to show you what way I do it. I'm not saying it's the best way but it's just a way of doing it. Um, I'll go through a quick list of the parts that I've got to do it. Um, the first being the uh, sort of weatherproof enclosure IP55. That I used this once from Maplins. It cost twenty pounds. Um, you could get one, maybe just as good off eBay for half that. But I was lazy and went into Maplins and got this because I knew it's just the perfect size for what I need to do. Um, I also have. I'm not sure whether you can see it there. Also have it marked out for the uh, the STC one thousand, which is the the main part of this. It's a temperature controller itself. It's going to go in the top and then either side I'm going to have neons. I don't need these but I like having a red and a blue to tell me when the uh, the cooling side of the controller is working and a red one obviously for the heater. Uh, and I also have marked out down here for the sockets. Now I have switched sockets here. I tried to get unswitched sockets but they didn't have them so I just went with the switched ones and a backing plate to hold it in place. The sockets I think were about £1.30. It would be cheaper if they were unswitched and the backing plates were about 50p each if even that. And I need two of them. One for the heater, one for the cooler. Uh, again that was from Screwfix for those. The neons, just going back to them, they were they were only about a pound each or something close to that from uh, Maplins as well. Only place I could find them. Um, there's other ones on eBay that are lamps that have bulbs and stuff, quite big things. But I like these because they were quite small and done the job. Uh, and I've just seen it is an STC 1000 and it comes with the moulded plastic temperature sensor. Um, what you'll also need is terminal blocks. That's a strip of seven and a, a single for wiring it up internally. And I've stripped some of the cable out of a 13 amp lead. So you have the earth, your live, your neutral. And I'll cut this up and use it again for doing the wiring which looks a bit like that and this image I just got it uh, through a Google image search I think it was a project somebody was doing on Jim's beer kit and they've done a really good diagram of how to wire this up so that's what I'm going to use uh, for wiring mine uh, what else do I have we have the two glands one for the temperature probe and one for the mains lead and these are pence and they're both IP68 and the big one for the mains lead is M16 by 1.5 and the one for the temperature sensor is uh, M12 by 1.5 and they both do a good job of holding the, uh, the cables in place that travel through the box. Uh, and finally I use some speed connectors just to make it easy, see as me soldering onto the uh, neons, just use some speed connectors since they have the speed terminals on them. And that I think is about it. So what I'll do is I'll cut out where I have it marked here and uh, I'll come back and show you what way everything fits together and what it looks like when it's wired up. Alright, as you can see I have uh, cut the lid out and put in the neons, the controller and the two uh, sockets. Um, it does take a while, especially with these switched sockets because the back of them is a sort of a regular shape. And with the unswitched all you need really is a hole saw and it'll fit into that circle that it leaves. But with these you have to do a bit of extra work cutting out to get it to fit. Um, the neons are easy enough to 10mm holes, just push them until they snap in. And um, with the controller 
um, it was just chain drilling, um, pop out the uh, the piece and then file it until it fits in. And to be honest, that's where most of your time goes in cutting this out. The rest of it's quite easy, but a bit of extra time spent on getting the ring in its right place and it'll look fairly neat. Um, but that's the lid done, and I've also done part of the box as well. So that's the temperature sensor coming in, and I've drilled a hole for the uh, the grommet for it, tightened it up, and done the same for the main slide. Um, so that's ready to go, and I've also cut my cable into the lengths that I think I need, um, and that's about it. Just some speed connectors then for the speed terminals on the back of the neons. So uh, what I'll do is. I'll wire it up most of the way and then I'll cut back to it um, and show you what I've done. Right, as you can see, I've now it sort of 90% wired up. And I should have mentioned earlier that these wee neons obviously are 240 volt um, and they get their feed from the live and neutral terminal uh, on the back of each plug so uh, when the relay clicks um, for whatever socket uh, and the socket goes live then obviously the neon for either socket will go live and light up and just give you an indication of um, whether you're in a heating cycle or a cooling cycle um, and that's about it so as you can see there's nothing that uh, complicated, uh, the sensors ready to go in and just the live and neutral uh, on the earth into your earth here and that's it so you just wire them up close the box, screw it up and that's you so that hopefully is something close to that, the only extra cables that you see there are for the neons so what I'll do is I'll put it together and then just show you what obviously the wee cover has to go on the back of the controller so I'll do that, put the lid on, wire it up, switch it on and just let you see even the neons working and that's about it so just do another bit of wiring and that's it okay as you can see I have it finished and plugged in and this is the temperature sensor coming out this end. I have the temperature, ideal temperature set at 25 degrees and the threshold set for half a degree above that and half a degree below so there's a a sway of one degree so if it's set at 25 um, and it gets to above 25 and a half degrees the cooler will come on so that activates this socket and then whenever you have chilling, say it's a fan or a fridge or any sort of chiller, um, it will come on and cool down whatever you're doing uh, until it reaches that range, that 25 and a half degrees, and then it'll cut out. Um, and it'll stay like that. I'll just show you. You'd never have a temperature crash like this, but there you go. There's the... Uh, the cooler's went off and because it's dropped now below 24 and a half degrees um, it's trying to, it's making the socket live and it's going to try and bring on uh, whatever you're using as a heater um, so it's trying to bring it back up again to 25 degrees but you can set the threshold um, up to 10 degrees I think so anywhere from say 20 to 30 degrees depending on how um, and there's it going out because you've reached 25 and this is going to go there's 25 and a half and then this here is the compressor run light so the cooler doesn't come on straight away the same way the heater does and that's to save the compressor in your fridge constantly flicking on and off and on and off which can damage it so uh, it does give the temperature a chance to stabilize and uh, before it'll bring the uh, the cooler on, but there you go, there's it on now. So that's it sitting at 25 
and a half so it's trying to cool down and again if we cool down the temperature sensor it goes out and the heater comes on straight away but as I say you wouldn't have that sudden uh, crash in temperature so uh, from experience if your room's close to the temperature that you've set this at um, you'll very rarely see either of these coming on um, for brewing beer I brew beer in the garage and more often than not it's just the heater that's on um, in fact for, for brewing beer out in the garage this is never on because I don't need a chiller so it's really only the heater socket that's used for that um, but if you're doing something like a, a lagering or something this would be ideal because you'd have one for the fridge one for the heater um, uh, I also use it for sous vide um, which uh, only uses the heater socket as well so you use the heater socket on a, a slow cooker and it's really good at doing cooking steaks perfectly and um, so I might do a video on that um, again just to show this working with a slow cooker for doing sous vide um, and I'm also going to do another one of these um, with a humidity sensor I might do it all in one box where you have the temperature control and then the humidity as well with its own socket um, if you want to do say hydroponics or something um, and what else I think that's about it so uh, there it is, it's not maybe the best way of doing it but it's um, it's my way that I do it and I've made a few of these and they're very reliable and uh, fully pay for the wee temperature controller it's it's really rock solid and yeah so if you, if you have anything that you want to um, ask just ask in the comments section and I'll try and get back to you but uh, that's it.